welcome to this, the second part of um, making a CV tutorial. So in this second part, we're going to start exploring very basic CSS. Now, what is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. So in uh, web development, we use CSS to influence and style, essentially, the presentation of HTML. So in this tutorial, we're going to be exploring CSS. You can use it, what can you use CSS for? You can use it to style text. You can use it to style background colors. You can use it to start and produce animations, basic animations. You can use it to basically control the look and the feel of a web page. Uh, it has many benefits because uh, in older versions, well, prior to CSS being around, um, if you wanted to change, I don't know, say the size of something, you'd have to put it in with HTML or often a lot of what was often used in the older websites for layout, for example, was tables, which no one would use today. You'd use div elements and uh, basically for cut a little bit of the web history short, uh, it just made the process of adding uh, making something look good a lot easier. But I don't want to focus too much on the history of CSS. Uh, so, concepts. In CSS you have uh, something called a selector, which uh, is generally refers to uh, an element on the canvas. So, uh, like if you wanted to select all elements with, which were heading one so we covered in the last tutorial we did heading one you would um, just simply type h1 and then change color if you want to change the color to red you just write color red color colon red semicolon um, and then two very important thing to remember in CSS is you have IDs and classes. Now these are attributes you can add to HTML so that um, you can style something specifically. So an ID is a unique, it's a basic distinction you have to remember between ID and classes. IDs are unique, so there's only one of that element or that thing on the page. So for example, you could use it for a container element that contains your layout, and you could style it from this like width, 100% height 100% etc class you could use many times so you could say if you had an element an element is used to refer to some like something on the page Just to hook up that. so say if you had um, a class that you wanted to use several times like I don't know you wanted to create lots of red boxes on a on a page for some reason red rectangles you could create a class called red rectangles or red rect red r-e-c-t you define define that by in CSS by a dot. So IDs are defined by a hash, classes are defined by a dot, and then uh, full stop. And then you'd write so you'd write if I wanted to create an ID for a container, I'd write uh, hash container brackets. Put my CSS now that width for hundred percent. Blah blah blah. If I wanted to create a um, class, I'd put dot, red rectangle, brackets, background color red, width for 100, uh, whatever, 200 pixels, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, another thing to remember in CSS is you have um, different units of measurement. So you can do it, you can do something with pixels, you can measure, um, define the width height of pixels, and also you can define it with so like percentage value and you can do it in the end. So generally speaking I use fluid layout for CSS but uh, and but yeah so you can use pixels fluid layout or EM. The, dif the differences between those are um, 
you're setting that width or height uh, to a specific pixel ratio. Uh, pixels, you're setting it to the percentage that it takes up on the screen. So, like if you had, I don't know, 100%. And then you took off 20-25%, then that's a quarter of the screen. And then EM is more like, um, there's a standard measurement which is 1. And then if you, you I generally use EM for uh, text myself, I don't really generally use it. Anything else. Anyway, without further ado, I'll go into the tutorial now because I think I've yabbered on for enough. And that basically gives you an overview of some of it. Um, so without further ado, let's boot up into Visual Code, Visual Studio Code, and I'll guide you through what we're doing here. So let's go. First off, we need to create a separate CSS file, so that which we will reference here, where it says link rel style sheet, and currently links to. Nothing. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call it main.css. You can call it anything you want within reason, but it's just a good naming convention to call it main CSS. So here we have a, in the head section, we have a reference to style sheet, and we need to add this. Now let's just Start off with something simple to demonstrate what CSS can do. Body. Uh, oh, this should. There you go. Straight away we have a change. So what's happened there? What I've done is I've linked. A style sheet to this HTML file so that uh, the CSS can define the presentation of the HTML, which can include positioning, colors, all that sort of animation, even. Uh, and I've just added this is referencing the body tag. There you go, selector, body, and I've added this background color green. So that's made this background green. But I don't think we want to green. Maybe add some more things here, like uh, so font, family, maybe to change the font, which will change it on every uh, everything underneath body, uh, which is fine for now. It'll just be the setting the basic font style for the actual the entire thing. It's just whatever it's random one comes up there. So there we go. See straight away that looks a bit more fresh, honestly. Uh, but we want to have it green, so I'm going to just, for the time being, possibly get rid of that or change it. Maybe like an off white or something. So, yeah, so. And da, 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 da. Uh, not white, I don't need to define its white because it's white there by default. So, light grey. You can put this as a hex, I'm just doing this because I can't remember hex values off the top of my head. So, bearing in mind the job is for a cyberpunk private detective. So, I'll just try and do something that's in the style of that and sort of demonstrate some interesting CSS effects, I guess, as well. Um, so, I think we want to position this somewhere else. So, possibly the picture we're going to move on to the picture next, which is here the image SRC from the first um, tutorial. Now, we're going to demonstrate, now I'll demonstrate something in CSS, which you'll use quite a lot, and that's ID in classes. So, typically, you use an ID for where there's one of an element, typically use classes for when there's many of it. So I can use an ID for this. And I'll put uh, I'll put 
put um, photo. Let's call it photo. So that will increase in that client uh, selector of ID. Uh, photo, sorry, an ID selector of photo. And I want to create here. So skip. It's just really clear, not that one. Sorry, that's class. I want to create. Where is it on this keyboard? New keyboard, sorry. There we go. So. So as I said before, blah, 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 blah. So we're creating an ID selector first. So we want to float this to the right. Float means that it floats to the right of anything, every other elements around it, and that should instantly, hopefully, there, there you go. So that's created a, it floats this element to the right of the content here, which is paragraph hypertext. Okay, so that, probably make it a bit bigger as well, make it could possibly, so that's introduced to the floating right, which is, you use a fair amount actually. You might also want to make this responsive too, so I'll expand this a bit more as well actually. I might sound like I'm running ahead of it now, but trust me, it'll make sense. Do class, uh, do ID container, because there's only one of them. Just, uh, if you're losing in track of it a bit now, just hang tight, it might, should make sense once. So this top of the content, so that's where the content starts in the actual body and I want to have this right down to the bottom because what I'm going to do now is create a container so that, uh, I mean you can use bootstrap often for layout things but I'm going to do it from scratch because if you want to really in the fundamentals that's the best way to do it. So that's again this never ID. Ah, just have to mute till I run. Okay, let's go to uh, container. That one have. So what I'm doing here is defining the width as 100%. Uh, height, auto, I think. Just, I mean, if you color this in so it makes a bit more sense, I guess. So uh, the container there, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, all the, this, this contains all that content. Everything that's within the container is there. So if I make this, yeah, because all, that's all to size into the size of the content. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. Now, what else do I want to do? Maybe you want. I think I want to change the red. Obviously, I just did that to demonstrate the color. So we just go back to here. Maybe we want to make it so that where we have, say, key skills, it's in a different color or something. Or maybe we want to style up certain, uh, maybe we want to style up, for example, here, everywhere where we use heading, we want to create a slightly different style for that. So how you do this is H1. H2, H3, H4, and these are sort of standard selectors that you can modify. 
So let's go. Just do something very easy, simple first, like color red. It should, yeah. So that changes the color of each header now. Heading now. Uh, we're changing something about the red because it's a bit garish. Um, blue, white, blue, maybe. Sea green. Just like the lights in here. Oh, it's alright. And we'll change. We can also in here to sort of get in your head the fact that you can sort of separate out, um, specify a lot more the design, of look of things. Put font family something else. Maybe a monospace if they got that. Yeah. So there you go, changes all the heading styles, but the paragraph and anything else is unaffected. So it's starting to look a bit more interesting now. Um, also, we might want to change the style of this. It's very diff generic. I mean, my website, but it's just. So this is a. If you remember in the HTML, this is a href. So what you do to change that in here is go da, 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 da. Uh, text decoration none is it oh, that's the text decoration as well. That removes the underlying, so you can do something a bit more interesting like that with that now. You can also add a special case for when someone's hovering over the link too. So, for example, uh, color red now. Just to s there you go. Now you've got a hovering link there, so you can change color. I mean, you can make it possibly instead of that, you could do font weight, which is basically a way to uh, give it, make it bold, so that makes it stand out a bit more. Then, okay. So what else can we modify here? We can make this bigger. So let's make this image bigger with CSS. You can see see the power of it immediately. I guess intuitively. Now we have these classes. If I want to change. If I want to create, well, if I want to create many photos, I could create class, but it just makes it very easy. I don't have to like modify anything in HTML. Make it more like phone. This would be too big, probably, but just want to. There you go. So that one might be. And uh, it makes it sort of a bit more responsive. It's a bit more responsive now. I need to fix some parts of it. Like add more. Ah! So what I probably want to be adding. Uh, need some margins or padding. Too much. Twenty pixel margins. So that creates a. I want to add some padding. I'll explain that in a second. So, margin. There's a border. It's something called a border box model. Uh, and this is. Basically, the most basic thing you need to understand about that is padding sort of affects the inside, margin affects the outside uh, in terms of spacing. So, there's no content within that, like text wise. So, uh, let's go for. That's what I need to add. So, what's that? Oh, yeah, I was going to add some padding within the container. You can also specify padding in certain areas, so that sort of centers everything a bit more nicely, which is good. Let's have a look and see how responsive it is. Responsiveness is something on it. So, responsiveness means um, it's going to work on a lot of. Let's see what this looks like on a mobile phone, for example. Something you'll get used to doing more of. And, so it's very squidged at the top at the minute, so you'd have to create um, uh, 
Uh, you can create media queries to deal with that sort of thing. So but I'll, I'll have to create a con well, I've already got a container actually. So maybe I could create a sub container for this part. Or not a sub container, but a, like a section heading, I guess. change that body font it's a bit boring this is often the design process of why you sort of Let's look at some other things. So, at the minute, we've got this very generic sort of list item. Uh, wait. So, if I wanted to create a custom one, uh, as we've only got one, if you want to create different list item types, then you'd have to create classes. But we've only got um, new. We've only got one list on here, so we'll just create one. Right? So. It's been a while since did this bit actually. Uh, style. style. Square, I think we can do. So let's change that to a square, which is pretty cool. Or you could even do none. So that creates no none of that. There you go. So you might want that as well. Uh, I think. And you can even change the colour of that, I guess, too. Or you can make it bold or something. So you can make it like full weight. We did before. Bold. Something like this. It doesn't look right, I just, I just wanted to show you you could do that, so that's, we've covered a bit of uh, the text I suppose. Um, da, 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 da. We're going to want to make, I need something more still, definitely. So let's just look at some, so we've got this image, we could add a border around this possibly. Maybe give it some shadow effect or something. So we can do that, we can just add a border. Solid five pixels and black, so it's just very seeable at first. So that adds a border on the photo now. Make it a bit bigger. So that sort of creates and box shadow, white. I think you do that. Just, uh, which way is it? Ah. <coughs> Not messing around with that for a while, doesn't matter that too much about that. Let's go. So that's created a little bit of a. Uh, or, maybe if I want to keep it consistent with the text, it would be quite nice to make it a light sort of green. There we go. So that's quite interesting now I suppose so I guess we should probably look at um, positioning too I've already looked at that a bit with float we're not really doing a layout properly here but actually why not we might as well so what we're going to do next is going to create a header at the top here which will be fixed in place which will say no vortex CV and then we'll have the text and all this content below and there may be a footer for that so I'll show you how to do that so this is something you'll commonly have to do on websites because you'll have to be creating a header term, a header element at the top and probably a footer at the bottom which is fixed at the bottom so let's do that so we want to create first so we want to the area we want to create this in is just here and only really here so if I do I 
those off, those were silly. And if you wanted to take that to take up a certain amount, so I need to create that here. Sorry, I just got made caught midway through what I was saying. <laughs> Had a Position absolute will do first. Which means it will be placed wherever you um, exactly wherever you specify it, and then we're going to put background color. Let me set a bit of background color, just set it ready first so I can see it. Okay, and then we need to make it width. 100%. Instead of, it's only what it does is in, it's taking inherent in the width, and we have to force it to be 100% to get this to work properly. So there you go. It's not. I need to modify that a lot more now, but still. Uh, okay. Actually, put this outside of here. I think that might work. Because I've added padding on it. That's why it happened. Yeah. There was nothing still. Get black probably. Oh, it's because there's uh, ah yeah, it's because there's padding. So get rid of that. Container doesn't need the padding. Uh, okay, what is happening? I'm locking this up as I go along, so sorry if it's a bit confusing, I guess, sometimes. Uh, I'll create this differently now because I'm doing it this way. Container. So I'm going to. Gonna go over that was too much. We were like, so I'm doing. Uh, I'm using fluid uh, positioning, fluid widths. You can also do pixels. Far in a pixel, so you can specify it in pixels. But uh, that's not how I'm doing it. So the, as the height is 10%, I want it about probably 15, uh, 20 or something on the container, which I'm going to create now. Da -da -da -da. Uh, top. And I want to position absolute. Just do absolute. So there you go, you can see it's repositioning a bit there, maybe even Okay, right, okay. So it's starting to look something interesting, I'll add some padding on that, that's too much. Well, I'll add specifically padding left because I'll show you that you can do that. So padding, if you want to add a specific padding, you to, so like say for the best way, but not do it apply it to all, everything. You do that. So that's that done. Sort of. It's not perfect, but I don't know what that's happening. Oh, I probably saw something put on the body, isn't it? Uh, I'll work with that later. 
so that solves that, and then we want to add. Save this. Maybe that's where it's not working. Uh, okay, so we've done some basic uh, color changing, some starting to do some layout work as well. Let's just see what this. Okay, I need to make a change to the text now. Oh, yeah, I need to have padding for all of it, really. I think that's all it is. It's just the fine patterns that are left. It's overflowing a bit there now, so I need to fix the rest of it. Got too used to using Bootstrap, that's the problem. <laughs> Abstract it all the way from here. This needs to be responsive, this image. So this image is creating problems because it's not properly responsive. Uh, so what's the best way to do that? It'll be auto. No, not that. <laughs> Just starting to get those. So you can see that the improvement there in the responsiveness because of positioning that image is still a bit off, but let's just check on how it look on mobile devices now. Should uh, I might have to yeah, I still have to add alright vertically but not you'd have to stack it like so this goes across there, but I'll add some media queries for that. This is obviously, I'm doing this very fast, so it's not perfect. Okay. I'm going to create a header section now, so a, a footer, sorry. Div ID equals footer. So this. And then I'm going to go douche. Douche. And then again, same principle. It's there, but instead of top now, we want to go bottom. We're right on the bottom of the screen all the time. So that should then position it on the bottom. It should be the same size as the header. Uh, not header though, footer. Make sure the names are correct. Otherwise, it won't work. There you go. Oh, I think I need to add fixed as well, something else about that there, which get rid of the padding, I think. Okay, uh, what? I need to figure out what I've done wrong there. Something's messing up. Here's a tip for if you want to fix the stuff on the fly Google uh, Chrome or well, Wizard has it as well, of course. It is you can see what so it's containers basically. Can do that. So if I do that, I just need to drop the hundred percent for some reason. That's messing it up. So I'll drop that, and then it's sort of correct now. Horrible, it looks horrible, I know, but I'm going to try and modify it now. I need to change the black backgrounds. White or something, not white. It's whatever. It's just, I'd spruce it up and make it look nicer in a second, I think. No, 
now I'm just sort of experimenting. Okay. Okay. Maybe we wanna I don't know, there's a bit of an overflow there actually, I need to fix that. It's creating that. Probably some padding or something, I don't know. So this is this helps you see and you can also this one's really useful when you're doing especially with CSS. Using it, there we go, so it's the width of hundred. Oh no, it's not it's, it is something to do with width of hundred that's messing it up. There's something forgotten, I guess. You can edit you can edit in here so I can just like see what happens if I change it to min width for hundred. Just probably needs to be auto, I think. Okay, I'll just leave it as that for anyway. Auto just means that it's going to be the same as there. It's going to be filled in like that. That's okay for now. Maybe this black. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look very nice, but I'm gonna fix all that. Have some padding, padding to the text that we're in that. So 20 pixels, keep it consistent. There we go. That's better. And this one, background color, let's do black. There we go. Okay. I think we want to make the text a bit bigger, so I'll, sh I'll show you how to do that. That's a very simple one, font size, and I want to make it one point. So there's a few ways you can do this. You can do it with a pixel value, like 20 pixel, which will make it 20 pi a pixel value, like that. Makes it bigger all over. You could do it as a, I think you could do it as a percentage. I've never hardly ever used it this way, but I think you can do it this way. Yeah, so it makes it 32% of the screen. Never ever do it that way. I usually use EM. So EM is like the standard font size. You can make it. So if I make it one point, it makes it better for responsiveness if you make it EM. Make it a bit bigger like that. Or I can do something like 1.4 EM. That's that's not bad. Um, Okay, now I'll make it this, make it the same CSS this style on here. The consistency, I think, it's the same as the photo border. So the border around it, the header. So that, that color. I'm just sort of fiddling now, so this will probably be over soon. Possibly the same on this as well. Quite like that of a border actually. This is what you often do when you're coding CSS is just it's a lot of it's tinkering, really. Uh, and then maybe also a background as well. Uh, why does that change that? Oh. It's smaller actually. Too too much. Probably a bit too much and that the designers are probably shaking their heads but I'm trying to do this very fast. Okay, blah blah blah. What's that margin on the side there? So look. Let's 
here it isn't responsive. A little bit better. Not fully there. That's too obviously too big of a gap. Uh, but uh, we'll move on to responsive on the next tutorial, I think. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this background colour black. And hopefully this will have covered a little bit enough. Well, for now. It's only a very basic introduction, so it should be alright, hopefully. You can add just background, I just don't know why I even add colour sometimes. I might hit the I'll wrap this up soon, I just need to Add some padding on this thing. No, too much. Padding left. Okay, and it's because I'm adding the padding left here. It doesn't need it because it's already got it in the cont Oh no, it's got it in. This would be the way of doing the container, isn't it? I suppose. I haven't really got a container now, so it's more like content. It's not a container. So I'm going to change this. This might make much sense, but that's how it is A bit weird that I've done it this way, but <sighs> tidy it up a bit. God damn it. Ah! Stop opening things. Opening things by accident. Still got that overflow, why? I've done something a little wrong here, I think. See how the text nicely sort of drops down there on this view, it's just quite, it's not perfect yet, I need to tweak it quite a lot, but that's quite good.
Okay, so it doesn't look like much at the minute, but I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, so it gives you a basic introduction to CSS, and uh, I'll cover more of it later. Why is that long? It should be white still. I'll cover white. Add a white colour onto the. It looks. It needs uh, refining. It needs to look better, but that's sort of an overview of that. Um, and I think on the next video, I'll, I'll do this in two parts. I'll make this a little, refine this a bit more, and make it a little bit more look good, good looking, I suppose. So yeah, tune in for that if you're interested.